HQ2 shutting its doors. Obviously, people would like to see more restaurant options. Population on the rise in the Billings Heights, but several businesses are struggling. We'll look into why. Plus, setting up camp. This is our home, and this is the center of the company. We're very committed to Billings. A longtime Billings business opens new headquarters. We'll take you inside. And face to face with a grizzly. I don't want to hear all the grace of God. One man continues his long road to recovery. We'll hear from him for the first time since a gruesome attack nearly ended his life. The MTN 430 News starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Andrea Lutz. The Billings Heights is one of the fastest growing areas in Billings, and it's only expected to grow further out once the new Johnson Lane interchange is complete. Despite that, many businesses are still struggling to find their footing with three popular spots, including the Stadium Club, shutting their doors. Tonight, our Kelsey Boggs digs deeper into the changes and the reasons behind them. For 27 years, Off Main Deli and Bakery took up this space in the Heights, but was recently forced to relocate. This is just one of the more recent Heights restaurant closures, leaving residents without many options for dining. Traffic on Main Street is constantly moving. And noise. In the Billings Heights, there are more than 33,000 residents, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. One third of the city lives out here. But recently, those residents have been losing dining options left and right. Small businesses are challenged. The thing about Main Street is it doesn't look like like anywhere USA. Yeah. I mean, most of the businesses are locally owned and operated. The Stadium Club, Okinawa Sushi, and Hardee's all closed this year. For lease or for sale signs are everywhere you look. That's all in addition to Off Main Deli, a staple for almost three decades. It's been in business for 27 years now. The Heights Deli is no longer on Main Street, but it didn't permanently close. It simply moved locations and can now be found way off of Main on North 27th Street. I love the location. I love the actual building. Yeah. It's super cute in here. But the decision to relocate wasn't up to the owner, Desiree Contreras Sutton. We would still be in the Heights if, if we could be. I'm happy to be where we're at, but it wasn't our choice to move. Back in the Heights, Pam Ellis, the secretary of the Heights Task Force, notes the Billings Bypass Project is about to make the area ever more popular. As they finish the Johnson Road, Road Bridge and the extension, that will open up a huge area for development. So it's really critical that people participate in the development of the neighborhood plan. As for the lack of options, Ellis urges Heights residents to provide input at the task force's monthly meeting. Obviously, people would like to see more restaurant options. Some of the some of the sit down restaurants are really packed. Ultimately, really, the business owners are are smarter than we are. I mean, they they can see the traffic. They know the quantity. So I think businesses where they see a marketing opportunity will come back in Billings. Kelsey Boggs, MTN News. And on the other side of the Heights, the Oasis Water Park received some pretty good news. They've been awarded a $1 million grant for an expansion project. Oasis says the plan is to use the money to construct a surf pool along with other expansions. The project will get underway this year, but it remains unclear, though, when it will be finished. Today, Israeli forces continue to launch an operation in Gaza's biggest hospital with staff and patients still inside. Israel claims the hospital includes a Hamas command center, a claim that Hamas and Gaza health officials deny. U.S. officials say they didn't sign off on this specific operation and they didn't want to see hospitals attacked from the air. And tonight, a Middle East expert from the Atlantic Council says a key to instilling future peace and bringing an end to the war may lie with humanitarian aid. Elizabeth Ruiz explains. Since the attack on Israel on October 7th, Israel has stated it aims to completely destroy Hamas. The U.S. Department of State designates Hamas as a terrorist organization, but says Palestinian citizens are not to blame and should not continue to suffer for Hamas's attacks. I spoke with William Wexler, who is the senior director of Middle East programs at the Atlantic Council, a nonpartisan organization that promotes constructive leadership and engagement in international affairs. He says humanitarian assistance for the people of Gaza is positive and necessary for a number of reasons. For one, it helps the people and will hopefully lead to the release of hostages. But it's also positive because it denies Hamas the narrative it's been telling its people that nobody in Israel cares about anyone in Gaza. Let's be absolutely clear. Israel possesses the power and has possessed the power for many decades to, if it wanted to, to kill every single person in Gaza. 
Israel has not done that because Israel doesn't want to do that because it would be a horrible crime to do so. The only reason why Hamas has not killed every single person in Israel is because it doesn't have the capability and because Israel is able to prevent it from taking those actions. Wexler says the goal should be to limit the number of civilian deaths, which in part can be difficult since Hamas has built underground tunnels directly beneath where people work and live. But if humanitarian aid to the people continues and civilians who have been forcibly displaced are eventually able to return and rebuild a better society, Wexler believes there can be peace in the future. There's progress today as President Biden met with China's president in California this afternoon. The two leaders talking face to face for the first time in more than a year. Biden said the major priority of today's meeting is getting communications back on track. Well, the meeting comes amid tensions on both sides as military communication channels are cut off since about August of last year. Then in February, China's defense minister didn't answer a call from the U.S. defense secretary after the U.S. shot down the Chinese spy balloon. That spy balloon flew right over Billings before being shot off the coast of South Carolina. The Biden administration says the other big topics include artificial intelligence and cracking down on fentanyl trafficking. But despite some high clouds over much of central and eastern Montana today, we actually had above average temperatures, but that's going to come to a quick halt overnight tonight, and especially tomorrow afternoon. I have my eyes on another cold front moving in our direction, a chance for more gusty winds, some rain and snow showers, and also a cooling trend, a rapid one coming in for late Thursday morning and Thursday afternoon. Going to let you know how long that cooling trend is going to last and on your seven-day forecast to the middle of next week, coming up in just a few minutes. The state health department says those donation boxes are out to help benefit patients at the Montana State Hospital in Warm Springs with holiday gifts. The program is called Gifts with a Lift and it's jointly coordinated by the National Alliance for Mental Health, DPHHS as well. Suggestions for gift ideas include books, socks, winter wear, blankets, handheld radios and stationery. The state hospital says they're especially in need of winter coats for both men and women. And this year you can mail your unwrapped gifts to the state hospital or drop them off right here in Billings at the Rainbow House. That's located in the 900 block of North 18th Street. A Billings company with national reach is setting up camp in a brand new location. We are talking about Campgrounds of America, home to the Magic City for decades. And this latest move proves they don't plan to leave anytime soon. Tonight our Haley Monaco gets a look inside their new headquarters. The year was 1962. JFK was president. Billings was less than half the size it is today. And a new Yellowstone County company called KOA was just getting its start, offering campsites for just a buck 75 a night. We're founded in 1962 down on the banks of the Yellowstone, very near where the campground sits right now. And it was a local Billings businessman who had this idea for a campground. Fast forward 61 years and much has changed. KOA is now the world's largest system of privately owned campgrounds. But one thing has stayed the same. The company still calls Billings home. This is our home and this is the center of the company. We're very committed to Billings. But the company is beginning a new chapter, opening a new headquarters on the West End on TransTech Way. KOA president and CEO Toby O'Rourke says it was a mixture of outgrowing their old space and discovering the perfect location that made this move happen. We discovered this location it was about 2018. And then we started contemplating what a, a building might be for us and getting a lot of ideas. And we knew we wanted something that would really reflect the mission of the company about connecting people to the outdoors. And about 18 months ago, we broke ground. And now here we are, moved into the building. The 35,000 square foot building features nods to the history of KOA, celebrates local artists. Most all of the artists in the building are from this region of the United States, whether Crow or South Dakota Sioux, for example. And of course, welcomes the outdoors with large windows and decor that was built from using the trees that were you know brought down around the property as we built the new building so we we're able to repurpose those trees it's a move that o'rourke says has been such an exciting time for the company one that's business is doing great coming off the pandemic our business has just exploded we're actually up 40 percent over where we were in 2019. we're also expanding our brand beyond koa we have a new glamping brand a hometown company keeping its roots right where it started not far from its humble beginnings along the banks of the yellowstone in billings Haley monaco mtn news 
Still to come on the MTN 430 News on Q2 on the road to recovery. A man attacked by a grizzly two months ago is now back home in Montana. We'll hear from him for the first time. But up next, more of the same on the weather front today. Jason is in and he's going to let us know what to expect over the next seven days right after this.